Hi there, my name is Louise Norris and my husband and I have had a health insurance brokerage in Colorado for more than a decade now. And I have been writing about health insurance and healthcare reform since 2006. And I write for healthinsurance.org. I wrote an ebook that you can um, download for free from healthinsurance.org that is all about open enrollment, everything you need to know um, in this current open enrollment period. Um, one of the topics that comes up a lot is renewal for people who already got a plan in 2014 and are wondering what they need to do going into 2015. You know, should I let my plan automatically renew? Do I need to go in and pick a new plan? What's the story? And so I'm going to run through kind of how that works in each state and then um, you know, the details of how it actually works and explain why it is probably not in your best interest in just about any case to automatically renew, even if it's available to you. So if you are in a state that is using healthcare.gov for 2015 and also used healthcare.gov for 2014, um, chances are you can, you do have access to automatic renewal. That's the default for most enrollees. And then in several of the state-run exchanges, it's also the default, um, but there are several state-run exchanges where it is not the default. And so I have made a little list here, um, and they are in three different categories because these they have different things going on here. But um, in general, these are the ones where it's not necessarily the default for most enrollees. Um, Oregon and Nevada, both last year ran their own enrollment website, and this year are using healthcare.gov. So you have to start again and, renew and enroll there. Massachusetts also has totally changed their uh, enrollment site. So again, you're re-enrolling. Rhode Island is, has opted to have everyone manually renew just to make sure you're taking advantage of you know, the option to check and make sure you do still have the plan that works best for you for 2015. Idaho and Maryland, they, your plan won't lapse if you do nothing in open enrollment, but your subsidies won't transfer over, um, which means, I mean, 85% of people nationwide who enrolled in plans in 2014 uh, had subsidies. So, you know, most people who enrolled um, do have a subsidy on their plan, and I wouldn't necessarily call it automatic renewal if your plan renews without your subsidy. So, Definitely in those states, you do not want to automatically renew, um, even if you have that, you know, even if that they're saying, you know, you know that you're not going to lose your plan, you're going to lose your subsidy. Um, D.C., New York, Washington, Connecticut, automatic renewal is the default if you, when you enrolled in 2014, you gave the exchange permission to check your tax returns going forward to um, keep on getting your subsidy eligibility information updated. So um, if you didn't give them that permission, then automatic renewal is not available. So if you are in a state-run exchange that's not on this list, automatic renewal is the default for most enrollees. Um, but for almost all enrollees, it is not a good idea. And there are a variety of reasons for that. Um, for starters, there are 25% more carriers offering plans in the exchanges nationwide for 2015 than there were in 2014. So that is great news all around. I mean, it means it's everything's working the way it should. There is more competition. There are more options for consumers to choose from. You know, that's that's what we wanted with this. Um, but it means if you don't go back in and shop around, you don't even know that those plans are there. You know, you don't know you don't know about the option to get them if you're not shopping for them. Um, and a big part of the reason you should not automatically renew has to do with subsidies and the benchmark plan. So I'm going to just take a few minutes to explain how this all works um, and and hopefully clear up some confusion. So basically, the benchmark plan is the second lowest cost silver plan in your area. And there are hundreds of benchmark plans because there are hundreds of rating areas all across the country. So everyone has a different benchmark plan. And the benchmark plan from 2014 is not necessarily going to be the benchmark plan for 2015. It's just the second lowest cost silver plan. So if a different carrier 
has a lower rate in 2015 that undercuts where the benchmark plan was before, um, all of a sudden you've got a, a new carrier offering the benchmark plan. And the way subsidies work, I have a little, another little visual here that might help. So this is the amount of money that based on your income that the ACA says you should have to pay for the benchmark plan in your area. Now it's different for, depending on your income, this, this changes. So I haven't put an actual dollar figure on it, but in most cases it is lower than the actual cost of the benchmark plan. And that's where the subsidy comes from. So if the benchmark plan costs this amount of money and the ACA says you should have to pay this amount of money, the difference is the subsidy. You can take that subsidy and apply it to any bronze, silver, gold, or platinum plan in your exchange, um, but it's the, the actual number that they're calculating is based on the cost of the benchmark plan in your area. Now, let's say for 2015, all of a sudden the benchmark plan is less expensive. The amount the ACA says you have to pay is still virtually the same. There are some slight changes. Um, the percentage of income has gone up slightly, but so has the poverty level. So it's sort of a wash. For all intents and purposes, it's very, very similar what you have to pay. But if all of a sudden the cost of the benchmark plan has gone down, now all of a sudden this is your subsidy, not this. So this is the subsidy you could then take and go and apply to any other plan, any silver, bronze, silver, gold, or platinum plan in your exchange. So if even if, so in the past, you always would, if you were in the individual market, you would get a notification that, um, you know, your price is going up and then you would go and you would shop around and look and see if you could get a better deal. Now your carrier could still increase their price, but if your carrier increases their price and the benchmark in your area goes down, it's sort of a double whammy because all of a sudden your carrier is charging more and the amount of subsidy you can apply to your plan has gone down. Now, obviously, if you go back in the exchange and shop around, you can get that lower cost plan. Um, but if you don't go back in and look, then you might be caught unawares by the fact that your price is going to maybe go up more than you were expecting it to. Now, the flip side of this, it works exactly the same in reverse. If if this were the 2014 benchmark plan and all of a sudden the benchmark in your area has gone up, everybody's subsidies go up. So, but again, um, shopping around during open enrollment is how you find out what's available and what it's going to cost you. All of these numbers, the numbers on this chart, they're all automatically baked into the information you see when you go on the exchange and look at plans. Um, so the, the new plans will include the new subsidies and you'll see exactly what you need to see, but you won't see it unless you go in and shop around. So I want to use Colorado as an example because it's a perfect example of how this works. So here in Colorado, the ACA created co-op has really undercut the market um, for 2015. They have slashed their prices and in virtually every area of the state, they now have the lowest price plan and the second lowest price plan. Um, and so the benchmark plans have changed and we are a perfect example of this happening. So where our benchmark plan was here last year, it's gone down to here now. So again, this is awesome news for, you know, healthcare in general. That's what we're supposed to be doing here is cutting prices, you know, reducing premiums. But it means that all of a sudden the subsidy does not have to be as high anymore in order to bring the cost of that benchmark plan down to the amount you have to pay. So people who don't have that co-op plan, you know, if you have one of the other plans, and there are lots of them in our exchange, and if they just automatic opt for automatic renewal, the amount of subsidy they're going to get is going down for 2015. Now, in a lot of cases, you might go in there and still choose to keep your current plan because maybe you like the provider network, um, you know, maybe there's certain drugs covered on the drug formulary that just work for you. What a, there are many reasons why you don't necessarily want to just switch to a cheaper plan, but you should definitely go into it knowing exactly what you're getting and knowing that, you know, at least, you know, you've looked at all the options and you've picked the plan that works best for you for 2015. Now, in 
almost all states, you know, about five states, you do have to make your plan decision by December 15th in order to get your new plan to start on January 1st. Um, but this is a really busy time of year and you've got a lot of things to shop for right now that aren't health insurance. Um, if you don't get around to it by December 15th and all of a sudden you get a bill in the mail for January and it takes you by surprise and you are finding all this out at that point, um, you still can make changes. You have until February 15th to to switch to a new plan for 2015. If you don't get around to it by February 15th, you're, you, you do have to keep the plan you have all the way until 2016 unless you have a qualifying event, which is something like having a baby, getting married, you know, a life change event, basically. Um, so don't put it off too long. But you do have until February 15th to shop around in the exchange and pick a new plan. Um, so I think, you know, the takeaway message is even though millions of Americans have an option to just let their plan automatically renew for 2015, um, it's not the best idea. You just need to do yourself a favor and go back in and just take a few minutes to look and see what's there, see what options you have, see what it's going to cost you, and just know that you're, you're picking the, the plan that best fits your needs um, going into the new year. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year.